Hello students, this is the 10th lecture of our lecture series Advanced Materials for Energy and Information Technology. In this lecture, we shall learn about materials processing. We shall discuss about material synthesis, processing and thin film fabrication. Semiconductor materials are the heart of information technology. As we have already seen in one of our previous lectures that the semiconductor materials like germanium or silicon required to be purified up to 99.99 up to 9 places of decimal also called as magic 9 and such highly purified materials can be obtained from Choklarsky method and Joan refining. The ingot obtained after Joan refining is cut into individual discs or called wafers. Each wafer has a diameter of 300 mm and is about 1 mm thick. The wafers are polished until they have flawless mirror smooth surfaces. Companies like Intel buys manufacturing ready wafers from its suppliers. Wafer sizes have increased over time, resulting in decreased cost per chip. When Intel began making chips, wafers were only 50 mm in diameter. Today, they are 300 mm and the industry has a plan to advance to 400 mm. As of current records, the industries have already started making these wafers of diameter 1 meter. Photolithography is the process by which a specific pattern is imprinted on the wafer surface. It starts with the application of a liquid known as photoresist, which is evenly poured onto the wafer surface while it spins. It gets its name from the fact that it is sensitive to certain frequencies of light or photo and is resistant to certain chemicals that will be used later to remove portions of a layer of material or the resist. The photo resist is hardened and portions of it are exposed to ultraviolet light, making it soluble. The exposure is done using mass that acts like stencils. So, only a specific portion of photoresist becomes soluble. The mask has an image of the pattern that needs to go on the wafer. It is optically reduced by a lens and the exposure tool steps and repeats across the wafer to form the same image a large number of times. The soluble photoresist is removed by the chemical process leaving a pattern photoresist image that duplicates what was on the mask. These two pictures illustrate the process of photolithography. The next steps are the washing of the photoresist, etching and removal of the resist. During washing, the GUI photoresist is completely dissolved by a solvent. This reveals a pattern of photoresist made by the mask. The photoresist is protecting material that should not be etched away. Revealed material will be etched away with chemicals. After the etching process, the photoresist is removed and the desired shapes become visible. To manufacture a specific semiconductor device for a particular application, ion implantation is applied. For this, a photoresist is again applied. There is photoresist here shown in the blue color is applied and exposed photoresist is being washed off before the next step. 
The photoresist will protect the material that should not get iron implanted. Through a process called an iron implantation, one form of a process called doping. The exposed areas of the silicon wafer are bombarded with various chemicals impurities called ions. Ions are implanted in the silicon wafer to alter the way silicon in these areas conduct electricity. Ions are shot onto the surface of the wafer at very high speed. An electrical field accelerates the ions to a speed of over 300,000 km per hour. After this process, the photoresist will be removed and the material that should have been doped, shown here in green color, has alien atoms or doped atoms implanted now. In this process, the entire production of a semiconductor device has been summarized. Right from vapor preparation through photolithography, ion exchange, then diacing of the individual chips, then attaching the connection points or pigtailing, and at the end, the semiconductor device is packaged. In this slide, the entire process of making an electronic device has been explained. The story starts with the smelting and refining of polycrystalline silicon to monocrystalline formation. The monocrystalline ingot is further refined via zone refining. This undergoes slicing into silicon wafer. The silicon wafer receives circuit pattern via lithography. Then individual chips are diced and semiconductor chips are integrated with the semiconductor device. Then the devices are assembled to make the final product. The advances in semiconductors and silicon wafers are driven by the demands of diverse electronic products. The electronic products find its applications in almost every step in our life, ranging from automobiles, cameras, display units, phones, mobiles, remote controls, laptops, desktops, PCs and tablets, internets and smartphones, etc. Thin film technology provides a wider range of applications to grow and manufacture materials for both electronic as well as coating purposes. Thin film deposition is a process applied in the semiconductor industry to grow electronic materials. This method is also employed in the aerospace industry to form thermal and chemical barrier coatings to protect surfaces against corrosive environments. In optics, this method is employed to impart the desired reflective and transmissive properties to a substrate and elsewhere in industry to modify surfaces to have a variety of desired properties. The deposition process can be broadly classified into physical vapor deposition PVD and chemical vapor deposition that is CVD. In CVD, the film growth takes place at high temperatures leading to the formation of corrosive gases products and it may leave impurities in the film. The PVD process can be carried out at lower deposition temperatures and without corrosive products, but deposition rates are typically lower. Electron beam physical vapor deposition, however, yields a high deposition rate from 0.1 to 100 micrometer per minute at relatively low substrate temperatures with very high material utilization efficiency.
The main advantage of the thin film technology is very thin layers of approximately 1 micrometer can be obtained. Hence, less material is required and the cost will be less. This also ensures for a potential lower thermal budget and economic. Potential for roll-to-roll -roll deposition on flexible substrate is also possible, which is highly difficult in the case of vapor technology. The technology can be transferred with TFT, flat panel display industry, and good for BIVP applications. Radiation hardness is good. Therefore, this method can be employed for making materials for space applications. The main disadvantages, however, are lower efficiencies than crystalline silicon has been observed. Therefore, potentially large module cost is required. Potential for capital intensive production equipment, potentially scarce elements sometimes used, and spatial uniformity is a challenge during the deposition. The thin film technology is now hugely explored for manufacturing the solar cells. In this category, disynthesized solar cells, multijunctional solar cells, copper indium gallium disilinite solar cell, bulk hetero junction solar cells are commonly observed. The thin film deposition can be carried out by both methods, namely solution method and vapor deposition method. In solution method, chemical bath, spin coating, dip coating, doctor blade method, slot casting, spray coating, screen printing, and inkjet printing are the commonly employed processes. The solution-based deposition technology includes precursor formulation in the first step. The desired chemicals are dissolved to obtain a true solution, sol gel or dispersed nanoparticles. This is employed onto the surface by a number of methods as may be the case required. Post-deposition treatment such as drying, annealing, Shintering, UV radiation exposure, plasma treatment, and photonic curing can be done to obtain a stable thin film onto the desired surface. The entire steps involved in the process of solution based deposition technology has been summarized here. In the field of electronic devices, roll-to-roll -roll processing, also known as web processing, reel-to-reel -reel processing or R2R, is the process of creating electronic devices on a roll of flexible plastic or metal foil. In other fields predating this use, it can refer to any process of applying coatings, printing or performing other processes starting with a roll of a flexible material and re-reeling after the process to create an output roll. These processes and others such as sheathing can be grouped together under the general term converting. When the rolls of the material have been coated, laminated or printed, they can be subsequently slit to their finished size on a slitter rewinder. Large circuits made with thin film transistors and other devices can be patterned onto these large substrates, which can be up to a few meters wide and 50 kilometers long. 
some of the devices can be patterned directly much like an inkjet printer deposit ink for most semiconductors however the devices must be patterned using photolithography technique roll to roll processing of large area electronic devices reduces manufacturing cost most notable would be the solar cells which are still prohibitively expensive for most markets due to the high cost per unit area of traditional bulk mono or polycrystalline silicon manufacturing other applications could arise which take advantage of a flexible nature of the substrate such as electronics embedded into clothing large area flexible displays and roll up portable displays Vacuum deposition is the family of processes used to deposit layers of material atom by atom or molecule by molecule on a solid surface. These processes operate at pressures well below atmospheric pressure that is vacuum. The deposited layers can range from a thickness of 1 atom up to millimeters forming free standing structures. Multiple layers of different materials can be used, for example, to form optical coatings. The process can be qualified based on the vapor source. Physical vapor deposition uses a liquid or solid source and chemical vapor deposition uses a chemical vapor. The vacuum environment may serve one or more purposes as listed below. These are reducing the particle density so that the mean free path for collision is long. Reducing the particle density of undesirable atoms and molecules that is contaminants. Providing a low pressure plasma environment. Providing a means for controlling gas and vapor composition. Providing a means for mass flow control into the processing chamber. Condensing particles can be generated in various ways, namely thermal evaporation, evaporation, sputtering, cathodic arc, vaporization, laser ablation, decomposition of a chemical vapor precursor or chemical vapor deposition. There are two main categories for common vapor deposition and growth methods, namely chemical vapor deposition and physical vapor deposition. When the vapor source is a liquid or solid, the process is called physical vapor deposition. When the source is a chemical vapor precursor, the process is called chemical vapor deposition. The latter has several variants. Low pressure vapor deposition, plasma enhanced chemical vapor deposition and plasma assisted chemical vapor deposition. Often a combination of PVD and CVD processes are used in the same or connected processing chambers. On the other hand, the physical vapor deposition include sputtering, thermal evaporation, electron beam evaporation, closed space sublimation, pulse laser deposition, atomic layer deposition, molecular beam epitaxy, and so on. There are numerous methods which can be included in these two categories, but I have chosen these many to explain. Chemical vapor deposition is the formation of a non-volatile solid film on a substrate by the reaction of vapor phase chemicals or reactants that contain the required constituents. The reactant gases are introduced into a reaction chamber and are decomposed and reacted at a heated surface to form a thin film. Chemical vapor deposition is a vacuum deposition method used 
to produce high quality, high performance solid materials. The process is often used in semiconductor industry to produce thin films. In a typical chemical vapor deposition, the vapor substrate is exposed to one or more volatile precursors which react and or decompose onto the substrate surface to produce the desired deposit. Frequently, volatile byproducts are also produced which are removed by gas flow through the reaction chamber. Microfabrication processes widely use chemical vapor deposition to deposit materials in various forms including monocrystalline, polycrystalline, amorphous and epitaxial. These materials include silicon dioxide, silicon carbide, silicon nitride, silicon oxynitride, carbon fiber, carbon nanofibers, carbon nanotubes, diamond and graphene, fluorocarbons, filaments, tungsten, titanium nitride and various high key dielectrics. Two of the main chemical vapor deposition methods have been shown here. The first one is an schematic diagram of a hot wall CVD and the second one is an schematic diagram of a plasma CVD. Plasma enhanced chemical vapor deposition is a process used to deposit thin films from a gas state vapor to a solid state onto a substrate. Chemical reactions are involved in the process which occur after creation of a plasma of the reacting gases. The plasma is generally created by radio frequency AC or DC discharge between the two electrodes the space between which is filled with the reacting gases. The helping hand of the plasma helps in increasing the film quality at low temperature and pressure. Some of the desirable properties of plasma enhanced chemical vapor deposition films are good adhesion, low pinhole density and uniformity. Schematic representation of the RF plasma enhanced CVD apparatus assisted by a remote radical source used for the growth of carbon nanowalls has been shown here. In this slide, laser assisted chemical vapor deposition along with its apparatus has been shown. The picture on the right hand side shows the SM image of a 2 micrometer thick layer deposition. Here chemical vapor deposition process of graphene using methane gas onto the surface of nickel substrate is shown. Low pressure chemical vapor deposition LPCVD is a chemical vapor deposition method that uses heat to initiate a reaction of a precursor gas on the solid substrate. This reaction at the surface is what forms the solid phase material. Low pressure is used to decrease any unwanted gas phase reaction and also increases the uniformity across the substrate. Metal organic chemical vapor deposition 
is a process used for creating high purity crystalline compound semiconducting thin films and micro or nano structures precision fine tuning abrupt interfaces epitaxial deposition and high level of dopant control can be readily achieved it is a process for growing crystalline layers to create complex semiconductor multilayer structures in contrast to molecular beam epitaxy the growth of crystal is by chemical reaction and not by physical deposition this takes place not in vacuum but from the gas phase at the moderate pressures 10 to 760 torr as such this technique is preferred for the formation of devices incorporating thermodynamically metal stable alloys and it has become a major process in the manufacture of optoelectronics many industries in the power electronic and space utilize Metal organic chemical vapor deposition as a standard process for laser diode, LED, and semiconductor manufacturing. The MOCVD process is a recognized controllable synthesis method that uses a variety of precursors like trimethyl indium and diethyl zinc that require a robust delivery method to ensure process repeatability and high yield. This system utilizes bubblers to vaporize the precursor, allowing control of the precursor concentration, growth time, and growth rate. Some of the precursor is captured in the carrier gas stream and flows out of the blubber to the chamber. The amount of captured precursor in the process must be known and more than anything must be repeatable to provide maximum efficiency. Achieving this requires accurate, fast and ideally closed loop control of processes, variables including gas flows, temperatures and pressure. Physical vapor deposition is fundamentally a vaporization coating technique involving transfer of material on an atomic level. It is an alternative process to electroplating. The process is similar to chemical vapor deposition except that the raw materials and the precursors. That is, the material that is going to be deposited starts out in solid form, whereas in chemical vapor deposition, the precursors are introduced to the reaction chamber in the gases state. Sputtering deposition is a physical vapor deposition method of thin film deposition by sputtering. This involves ejecting material from a target that is a source onto a substrate such as a silicon vapor. Sputtering is a plasma-based deposition process in which energetic ions are accelerated towards the target. The ions strike the target and atoms are ejected or sputtered from the surface. These collisions cause an electrostatic repulsion which knock off electrons from the sputtering gas atoms causing ionization. Re-sputtering is re-emission of the deposited material during the deposition process by ion or atom bombardment. Sputtered atoms ejected from the target have a wide energy distribution, typically up to tens of electron volts. The sputtered ions, typically only a small fraction of the ejected particles are ionized on the order of 1% can ballistically fly from the target in straight lines and impact energetically on the substrates or vacuum chamber causing re-sputtering. Alternatively, uh, at higher gas pressures, the ions collide with the gas atoms that act as a moderator and move diffusively, 
reaching the substrates or vacuum chamber wall and condensing after undergoing a random walk. The entire range from high energy ballistic impact to low energy thermalized motion is accessible by changing the background gas pressure. The sputtering gas is often an inert gas such as argon. For efficient momentum transfer, the atomic weight of the sputtering gas should be close to the atomic weight of the target. So for sputtering light elements, neon is preferable, while for heavy elements, krypton or xenon are used. Reactive gases can also be used to sputter compounds. The compound can be formed on the target surface in flight or on the substrate depending on the process parameters. The availability of many parameters that control sputter deposition make it a complex process but also allow experts a large degree of control over the growth and microstructure of the film. Evaporation is a common method of thin film deposition. The source material is evaporated in a vacuum. The vacuum allows vapor particles to travel directly to the target or the object surface where they condense back to a solid state. Evaporation is used in microfabrication and to make macro scale products such as metallized plastic film. Evaporation involves two basic processes. A hot source material evaporates and condenses on the substrate. It resembles the familiar process by which liquid water appears on the lid of a boiling pot. However, the gases environment and heat source are different. Evaporation takes place in a vacuum, that is, vapors other than the source material are almost entirely removed before the process begins. In high vacuum with a long mean free path, an evaporated particles can travel directly to the deposition target without colliding with the background gas. By contrast, in the boiling pot example, the water vapor pushes the air out of the pot before it can reach the lid. At a typical pressure of 10 to the power minus 4 pascals and 0.4 nanometer particle has a mean free path of 60 meters. Hot objects in the evaporation chamber such as heating filament produce unwanted vapors that limit the quality of the vacuum. Electron beam physical vapor deposition or EBPVD is a form of physical vapor deposition in which a target anode is bombarded with an electron beam given off by a charged tungsten filament under high vacuum. The electron beam causes atoms from the target to transform into the gaseous phase. These atoms then participate into solid form coating everything in the vacuum chamber within the line of sight with a thin layer of anode material. The advantage of this process are the deposition rate in this process can be as low as 1 nanometer per minute to as high as few micrometers per minute. The material utilization efficiency is high relative to other methods and the process offers structural and morphological control of the films. Due to the very high rate of deposition, this process has potential industrial application for wear resistant and thermal barrier coatings in aerospace industries, hard coatings for cutting and tool industries and electronic and optical films for semiconductor industries and thin film solar applications. The main disadvantages, however, is that 
Electron beam physical vapor deposition is a line of sight deposition process when performed at a low enough pressure, roughly lower than 10 to the power minus 4 torsoli. The translational and rotational motion of the shaft helps for coating the outer space for complex geometries, but this process cannot be used to coat the inner surface of complex geometries. Another potential problem is that filament degradation in the electron gun results in a non-uniform evaporation rate. The image shown here depicts an electron beam deposition scheme where there is no direct line of sight from the filament to the deposition material. The electromagnetic alignment is shown in the first figure. The ingot is held at a positive potential relative to the filament. To avoid chemical interactions between the filament and the ingot material, the filament is kept out of sight. A magnetic field is employed to direct the electron beam from its source to the ingot location. An additional electric field can be used to steer the beam over the ingot surface allowing uniform heating. Closed space sublimation is a method of producing thin film, especially cadmium telluride photovoltaics. Though it is used for other materials like antimony, triselenide as well. It is a type of physical vapor deposition where the substrate to be coated and the source material are held close to one another. They are both placed in a vacuum chamber which is pumped down. The source and substrate are then heated. The source is heated to some fraction of its melting temperature and the substrate some lower temperature for example 750 degrees Celsius and 550 degrees Celsius respectively. This causes sublimation of the source, allowing vapors to travel a short distance to the substrate, where they condense, producing a thin film. This short path diffusion is similar in principle to short path distillation. Compared to other techniques, it is a relevantly insensitive process and takes as little as 10 minutes for the entire cycle. This makes it a very viable technique for large-scale manufacturing. An example of a closed space sublimation process is shown here. The source material is heated causing it to sublimate. The vapors travel a short distance condensing on the colder but still heated substrate. Heating is typically done by radiative elements heating through a quashed wall of the vacuum chamber onto a carbon heating pad. The diagram showing working principle of closed space sublimation has been presented here. The second picture is the experimental setup used in the technique of closed space sublimation combined with substrate rotation. Pulse layer deposition or PLD is a physical vapor deposition technique where a high power pulsed laser beam is focused inside a vacuum chamber to strike a target of the material that is to be deposited. This material is vaporized from the target in a plasma plume which deposits it as a thin film on a substrate such as silicon vapor facing the target. This process can occur in high, ultra high vacuum or in the presence of a background gas such as oxygen which is commonly used when depositing oxides to fully oxygenate the deposited films. While the basic setup is simple relative to many other deposition techniques, the physical phenomena of laser target interaction and film growth are quite complex. When the laser pulse is absorbed by the target energy, 
is first converted to electronic excitation and then into thermal, chemical and mechanical energy resulting in evaporation, ablation, plasma formation and then exfoliation. The ejected species expand into the surrounding vacuum in the form of a plume containing many energetic species including atoms, molecules, electrons, ions, clusters, particulates and molten globules before depositing on the typical hot surface. The first pick is a simple diagram of pulse layer lizard deposition, a technique for depositing thin films or thin layers of materials. In the second pic is shown thin film of oxides which are deposited with atomic layer precision using pulse laser deposition. In this picture a high intensity pulse laser shoots a rotating white disc of aluminium trioxide or alumina. The laser pulse creates a plasma explosion visible as the purple cloud. The plasma cloud from the alumina expands towards the square substrate made of strontium titanate where it condenses and solidifies building up one layer atomic thickness at a time. The substrate is mounted on a heating plate glowing red at a temperature of 650 degrees Celsius to improve the crystallinity of the alumina thin film. Atomic layer deposition is a useful process for the fabrication of microelectronics due to its ability to produce accurate thickness and uniform surfaces in addition to high quality film production using various different materials. In microelectronics, the ALD is studied as a potential technique to deposit high K, high permittivity gate oxides, high K memory capacitor dielectrics, ferroelectrics and metals and nitrides for electrodes and interconnects. In high K gate oxides where the control of ultra thin films is essential, ALD is only likely to come into wider use at the 45 nanometer technology. In metallizations, conformal films are required. Currently, it is expected that ALD will be used in mainstream production at the 65 nanometer node. In dynamic random access memories, the conformity requirements are even higher and ALD is the only method that can be used when feature size becomes smaller than 100 nanometer. Several products that use ALD include magnetic recording heads, MOSFET, gate stacks, dynamic random access memory, capacitors, non-volatile ferroelectric memories and many others. Atomic layer deposition is a technique for growing thin film for a wide range of applications. ALD is a special variant of the chemical vapor deposition technique where gaseous reactants or the precursors are introduced into the reaction chamber for forming the desired material via chemical surface reactions. A characteristic feature of ALD is that the precursors are pulsed alternatively one at a time and separated by inert gas purging in order to avoid gas phase reaction. The successive self-terminated surface reactions of the reactants enable controlled growth of the desired material. The unique self-limiting growth mechanism results in perfect conformity and thickness uniformity of the film even on complicated 3D structures. The process consists of introducing a precursor gas that will attach to all surfaces as a monolayer is known as chemisorption. 
Once the whole surface is covered by a monolayer of the first gas saturation is reached. The excess gas is pumped away and a second gas is introduced that also condenses and is chemisorbed on top of the first layer. The excess second gas is pumped away and then the whole process can be repeated to deposit a second monolayer. This sequence can be repeated as many times as necessary to deposit the desired total coating thickness. One of the significant features of atomic layer deposition as a process is that the coating deposited is conformal with the substrate surface. Conformal means that the coating follows the surface contours so that there is the same thickness of coating over the whole surface irrespective of surface roughness or defects. The covalent bonding of the atomic layer deposition coatings give good adhesion. This process is used by the semiconductor industry as the conformal coating can coat the sides and bottom of trenches equally as well as the top surfaces. Molecular beam epitaxy is a process in which thin single crystal layer is deposited on a single crystal substrate using atomic or molecular beams generated in Knudsen cells contained in an ultra high vacuum chamber. Molecular beam epitaxy takes place in high vacuum or ultra high vacuum that is 10 to the power minus 8 to 10 to the power minus 12 torus lake. The most important aspect of this process is the deposition rate, which is typically less than 3000 nanometer per hour that allows the film to grow epitaxially. These deposition rates require proportionally better vacuum to achieve the same impurity levels as other deposition techniques. The absence of carrier gases as well as the ultra high vacuum environment result in the highest achievable purity of the grown films. In solid source MBE, elements such as gallium and arsenic in ultra pure form are heated in separate electron beam evaporators until they begin to slowly sublime. The gaseous elements then condense on the wafer where they may react with each other. The example of gallium and arsenic, single crystal gallium arsenide is formed. When evaporation sources such as copper or gold are used, the gaseous elements impinging on the surface may be adsorbed after a time window where the impinging atoms will hop around the surface or reflect it. Atoms on the surface may also absorb. Controlling the temperature of the source will control the rate of material impinging on the substrate surface and the temperature of the substrate will affect the rate of hopping or desorption. The term beam means that evaporated atoms do not interact with each other or vacuum chamber gases until they reach the wafer due to the long mean free paths of the atoms. During operation, reflection high energy electron diffraction or read is often used for monitoring the growth of the crystal layers. A computer controls shutters in front of each furnace allowing precise control of the thickness of each layer down to a single layer of atoms. Intricate structures of layers of different materials may be fabricated by this way. Such control has allowed the development of structures where the electrons can be confined in a space giving quantum wells or even quantum dots. Such layers are now a critical part of many modern semiconductor devices including semiconductor lasers and light emitting diodes.
this brings us to conclude our lecture 10 thank you